If you've been watching any of my recent videos, you'll know I'm a big fan of Rebel 5. And one of the reasons for that is it's got a really sophisticated brush engine in it. Recently, I made a couple of new brushes. And in a future video, uh, I'll be looking to show you how you can do that in Rebel 5 in a bit more detail. But for today, I'd like to take those brushes and try them out by doing a demonstration landscape painting. My name's Pete. Welcome to Basement Picasso. So today I'm going to try and do this entire painting using these two brushes that I've created. So first of all, let's have a look at the two brushes that I've created. The first thing we'll have a look at is in the brush creator, one of the really nice things that uh, is available within the way that the brush engine works is the shapes and grains allow you to have multiple shapes and multiple grains within one single brush. And that gives you some tremendous variety that you can create. So if I show you how this brush works, if I start at the bottom and press very gently, you'll notice that it doesn't seem to do anything. And then it starts to create random shapes and text. And then it starts to paint quite heavily with very thick paint. So one brush is creating a, a lot of a variety in terms of shapes and marks. And when I press lightly, if I come back down, you'll see that what pressing lightly is doing is actually blending and smudging some of the paint that's there, again introducing random shapes. So the purpose of this brush is to uh, allow me to paint thickly when I want to, but also to introduce some random shapes, marks and text as I paint to give a little bit of randomness to the brush. The second brush that I've made uh, acts like a palette knife and again that uh, uses the multiple shapes and multiple grains uh, allowing me to create a bit of variety. So when we press lightly with this we get a little bit of a pattern. As I press more firmly it introduces some text and then when I press very firmly I get a sort of palette knife type shape and again as I press lightly that can start to do a little bit of blending and mixing. And this one's also responsive to the angle of the, the brush so that I can uh, move it around and make marks at a different angle but because it's a quite a thin uh, brush it also allows me to draw out some very interesting lines that pick up some random marks within it as well. So that gives me the, the ability to uh, draw thick sort of flat marks like that um, and then also push out thin marks uh, at whatever angle I'm, I'm holding. So it gives it a very natural feel in terms of the responsiveness compared to the angle that you're holding it at and using it at. So the idea today is I'm going to just use these two brushes that I've made as much as possible and to see if I can do a whole demonstration painting just using those. So this is the reference photo that I'll be using today. This is a photo that I took when I was over in Caradale in the west coast of Scotland and I went out and took the photo and also did uh, a little bit of a reference video. Uh, and one of the things that lets me do is actually draw from the video uh, as well as using just the, the static reference photo. So that's quite useful when I get back to the studio. So I'm going to start the painting today very big and loose uh, and I'm going to use colours from four different uh, methods. So the first one will be uh, in the very early stages just lifting some of the colours from the underlying image using the tracing functionality. So we've got this image in the bottom layer. You can click that and then click the tracing option. You'll see the little dots appear and that shows that that's now going to be tracing that colour into that layer 
uh, even if we hide the background picture, um, then it will still start to pick up that underlying colour. And we can bring those in. So I'll do a little bit of colour cloning. I'll introduce some colours just by directly picking them off the referen reference image. I'll pick a few colours specifically from the colour palette and then we'll pick colours actually off the painting itself. And in the first pass, we'll work very big, bold and loose. I'm not trying to paint. What I'm thinking about really is um, thinking about this as a colour mixing palette and just getting some interesting colours, some interesting blends and building together a coherent colour palette that then effectively becomes the colours for the, the painting once we go into uh, actually starting to draw a little bit of detail back into it. So that's the, the mechanism we'll use. So we'll start uh, with some cloning um, and just get some big marks down. So after about probably about 10 minutes or so, um, basically what I've done is managed to cover the canvas, um, pick up a lot of colours and start to get a lot of uh, interesting colour mixes coming through. Overall I think I've uh, started to get an interesting warm and cool palette. There's some really nice blue, some nice browns coming through, uh, a little bit of touches of dark greens and things that I can see being able to take through the picture, some really nice sort of blue greys coming through. So, you know, the colours that I have here now in this picture effectively become my palette for pretty much the, the rest of the painting. So between picking colours off the canvas itself now and then occasionally making little adjustments, this, this is really what we'll use to uh, refine the image. We've also got a lot of randomness come into it. We've got lots of wee bits of text, lots of shapes and uh, lots of marks and textures. So as we continue to work on this and, and refine it, it's trying to get a balance of not uh, over defining it, overworking it, but we need to bring through just enough to, to make it uh, read well, to, to make it coherent. Um, and that's what we'll work on now. So I'm going to stick with the same two brushes. Um, the only thing that I'm going to do really is just um, vary the size of them and as we start to work in and do a bit more detail then uh, I'll make the, the brushes um, progressively smaller. Um, if you watched one of my recent videos you'll see um, I use a little bit of hardware called a loop deck so uh, I can sort of paint along and then use that to very quickly and dynamically 
uh, change the brush size so you'll see that uh, happening quite a lot as the painting continues from now on. So at this point, I think we've got uh, a good solid start. I've uh, got some interesting marks and just generally getting the, the sort of structure and the composition, but we've managed to keep it reasonably loose at the moment. Um, found a lot of interesting colours and a lot of uh, subtle mixes starting to come through. So it's feeling like there's a nice coherent colour palette starting to build up. So the way that I usually work is I'll start um, sort of loose and rough um, and just let the, the painting sort of develop um, and then at some point, I think this is about the right sort of point, I'll then look to tighten up the drawing. Um, a lot of people will do that by having the drawing to begin with and then painting on top of it. Um, I find if you do that, you tend to tighten up very quickly and you, you can't be as sort of quick and expressive. So I like to start the painting sort of big and loose and then uh, bring the drawing in back in on top. So the way that we'll do that is um, we'll bring in another layer. We'll uh, hide the painting for just now and uh, go back to the reference painting. Um, I'll just stick to the, the brushes that I'm using at the moment and I pick a fairly dark colour and just make the brush very, very small um, and then just put in some indicative marks. I'm not going to try and draw out and trace out um, every sort of individual uh, line and contour. I just want some things that will help put down some rough placement so I can get a general sense of uh, where things are, are sitting um, and then just start to correct up the, the drawing based on that. So it'll be very rough, rough loose outlines, just enough of a, a hint of placement for some of the key things that I'm interested in. Um, just get the placement and that's probably all we need for the first pass. If you look at it you'll see um, uh, as a, a sort of drawing, um, it's incredibly loose still. Um, um, what I'm actually noticing is with the using the brush rather than normally do this with pencil, I've actually got much more interesting lines and marks um, than I would have got uh, with something like a pencil, which would have been much more uh, sort of uh, straight and stiff and. Uh, and whereas this has got a nice little interesting random marks and a nice sort of character to it. So hopefully what we'll find is when we bring that back on top of the painting, um, it uh, sort of sits reasonably well. Um, now one of the uh, tricks I tend to use is um, with the, the drawing layer, um, I'll keep that layer active and um, lock the transparency. 
and then what that allows me to do is to paint into that um, sketch that I've just done um, and that way I can uh, lighten or darken some of the lines so if there's lines that aren't really sort of standing out uh, sufficiently well I can bring those through um, and I can also use uh, sort of colours from the painting itself and uh, what I tend to find with that is um, that helps to very much unify the the image when you you bring some of these colours through into the, the line work. If your line work is just a a black uh, drawing on top of it, it tends to really sort of stand out. Um, so this helps to to bring the lines through and uh, unify them together uh, fairly well. Um, and that's all I need to just give me a little bit of a guide in terms of the uh, the placement of objects and what we'll now do is uh, I'll take the transparency off and we'll drop that layer down so it becomes part of the painting and then we just carry on painting and refining and we can now use that to, to help um, bring up some of the, the edges and some of the structure uh, around that. So up till now I've been working um, very much zoomed out um, we're, we're trying to keep it uh, a nice little small thumbnail image so that we can just focus on the whole picture and uh, and just make sure that it's generally working together um, and this is now the stage where we'll start to uh, zoom in and start to refine things uh, move things around and um, work in just uh, a little bit more detail but you can start to see as, as we zoom in the the quality of the brushes and all these sort of random marks the little bits of text that have come through um, all help to give a lot of character and a lot of interest to the the picture even at this stage um, and that now gives us a really good uh, base to be able to to work on and build out from here Welcome to session two. So I've taken a break overnight and come back to the painting and uh, now able to look at it with fresh eyes, see where we got to yesterday. And looking around, uh, I think there's, there's a lot of this that I'm very pleased with in terms of the uh, color, the composition, the marks, the shapes um, generally overall is starting to, to work really well and what I usually do at this point is think a little bit about uh, what I want to achieve in the next sort of 45 minutes to an hour so that, that's usually what I plan out in terms of the, the next step for any particular picture 
So what I'm thinking about with this as I sort of look at it and um, start to think about the things I want to work on and change, um, there's a little bit in particularly in the sort of foreground where some of the marks are, are overly loose uh, and a little undefined. Uh, there's some of the shapes and the, the rocks. Uh, I'm thinking generally about a sort of focal area and kind of pulling something into uh, this sort of uh, area in the middle, making that more of the, the kind of focal point. So we've got the, the beach and the lines kind of leading us up into this area. And looking at this sort of rock structure, uh, it's an interesting structure. Um, but what I'm thinking at the moment is the angles of these lines are all sort of taking you out of the picture and compositionally uh, it might be worth swapping that around so that it kind of brings you back in to this sort of shape and then leads you up into the, the clouds. So uh, I'll do a little bit around that, so I think I'm going to work on this as a focal area, experiment with different shapes in the rock, look at how this is sort of leading in. There's a little bit about uh, making some of the uh, the edges darker, a little bit of kind of vignetting. Um, and normally I would do that using the watercolours and uh, different brushes uh, for that, but I'm going to stick today to just using these two uh, different brushes that I've made. Um, so the, uh, the colours uh, I'll shift and darken slightly just using those brushes and I'll be using the loop deck um, which allows me to, to make very subtle colour shifts very quickly so I can lighten and dark, darken colours using that. Um, so that's the general plan. There's a lot of stuff I want to try and leave. Uh, I want to keep these sort of loose uh, rough marks as much as possible so I'm not going to work over the entirety of the painting. Uh, I want to be able to um, just focus on certain areas. So that's the general plan for uh, this session and uh, let's see how we get on.
It's always good to stand back from your artwork every so often. Uh, and a lot of people work on the basis that working digitally, that means you have to zoom out and look at a small thumbnail. But there's actually a lot to be said for just looking at a larger picture from slightly further away. Uh, and I'm very fortunate with the studio setup that I've got that um, I, I have a particularly large monitor that I can put my image on um, and then stand back and, and really get a much better sense of the, the texture and the, the detail within it. So for the last session that I'm going to do today, I'm going to be working with the uh, preview version of the image that Rebel gives us uh, on the big monitor so that uh, I can really sort of look at the picture as a whole while I'm working uh, and then just look at uh, areas that I want to add a little bit more detail on or uh, refine uh, some of the edges and some of the shapes. So let's give it a go. Okay, well there we have it. Uh, I think we'll call that one done for today. Uh, that's been really interesting using those new brushes, uh, learning a bit about um, how they behave, what kind of marks they make, um, and just a good exercise in terms of being able to try and do a whole painting focusing just on using those those two brushes. So that's that's been really interesting. Um, the only thing that's left to, to do now is I'm going to use one of uh, Rebel 5's Pro features, which is to be able to do uh, what they call the nanopixel export, uh, and that's going to allow me to uh, export the image at a much higher resolution, uh, which will then be able to support being printed off, and we'll also be able to, to really sort of zoom in and see the the details of the, the marks and the textures um, once we've done that. So now that's been exported uh, at a higher resolution, we can see uh, the final image and that allows us to zoom in and see the marks and the textures and the shapes, some of the little bits of text that have come through um, and just the, the way that even though I was working at quite a low resolution for the overall image, uh, how that's been able to build up uh, a very detailed final picture 
from the, uh, the work that we've done. So there you go. Um, I hope that was interesting. Um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if it was helpful, please uh, like, comment and subscribe. Um, if you'd like to see more of these, let me know. Uh, if you've got any thoughts or comments on things you'd like to, to see me work on, please do let me know. I'd be very interested to hear from you. Uh, otherwise, thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.